The American Heritage Dictionary defines ethics as the study of the general nature of morals and of the specific moral choices to be made by a person, or as a moral philosophy. The word ethics is derived from the Greek ethos, which means character, but can also be used to mean custom, habit, or as Aristotle states, the credibility that the author establishes. For the purposes of this, I intend to examine ethics as a moral code, which govern people's actions within a society. In the foundation of Metaphysic and Moral, written in 1785, Immanuel Kant states, If a law is to have moral force, i.e., to be the basis of any obligation, it must carry with it absolute necessity. In other words, his claim is that the laws that do exist must be necessary to give them ethical weight. He goes on to state that there is nothing that is purely good save goodwill itself. He further cites that things such as power, riches, honor, health, and general well-being can cause corruption if goodwill is not present to correct the influences of these. It is also stated that goodwill is good not because of its effects, but goodwill is good of its own virtue. To this, a choice must be made on what governs the will. Kant states that it seems that reason would be a poor choice and that instinct would be a better one. Kant states that the action of moral worth must come from duty, which he defines as the necessity of acting from the respect of the law. Furthermore, he claims that respect for the law must go beyond desires and that actions from duty can be judged by their determination, not by their purpose. Kant's view is that an action should be done if the action would, if it became universal for the situation, not disturb the greater good. John Stuart Mill writes on ethics and utilitarianism in which he speaks of utility, or the greatest happiness principle. He states that actions are rights that produce happiness and wrong that produce the reverse of happiness. He claims that pleasure and freedom from pain are the only things desirable as end, and that the greatest p pleasures are of the greatest value. Since men have the capability of understanding the pleasures of higher faculties, these can be considered greater pleasures. He makes a claim, better to be soccer is dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. A common claim against util utilitarianism is that it holds society to do, as people must be willing to act with the interests of others in mind even if it is detrimental to their own self-interest. John Paul Sartre talks of existential ethics, in which existence precedes the essence or purpose in at least one thing. Amongst atheist existentialists, which Sartre classifies himself as, the idea that a man's existence precedes his essence. Thus, Sartre goes to claim that man is nothing but what he makes of himself. If his essence does not precede his existence, he defines his own essence through his actions. As such, our idolized perception of ourselves is what we project as being the way all humans should act. A man who finds an omen to lead him will interpret the omen to his own means and go the way he intends. An example that Sartre uses is the story of a boy whose, boy whose brother is killed in a war and must choose between mother, as he is the only son she has left, or to go to war himself and try and avenge his brother's death. But which of these actions serves the greater good? Is it better to serve an individual, his mother, with certainty, or is it to try to serve the masses in an unsure situation, i.e. going to war and possibly dying in vain. However, all these views, while being common in the Western world, may not be the only way of examining these situations. In the Analects, it is written that the Master, referring to Confucius, or Master Kung, said, Guide them by edicts, keep them in line with punishments, and the common people will stay out of trouble, but will have no sense of shame. Guide them by virtue, keep them in line with rights, and they will, besides having a sense of shame, reform themselves. Confucius held the idea that the proper way to rule was to be a man of virtue and to enforce habits that were good and discourage habits that were not. The idea is to be the highest virtue, and the people will follow him to the point that the laws are unimportant, as an example of the leaders will teach the people how to live. Such ideas as starts existence preceding essence seems absurd to a Taoist. According to Lao Tzu in the Tao Te Ching, it states, Let all people return to their true nature. Love, kindness, wisdom, family harmony, and loyalty 
should not be taught one by one, separately from an honest life. Then, once again, people will regain their natural virtue of wholeness, the world will be naturally ordered, there will be n no one who singly and cunningly works for personal interests alone. Taoism teaches that the universe has a natural order, and that by going along with the order, man returns to being virtuous. As we can see through both these examples, the idea that man must act through a sense of duty to laws such as Kant states may be a fallacy. A proper question may be, what is the true nature of man? Should we enforce upon a man, or should we allow man to be free to follow his own moral path? And in doing so, will man become a creature of higher morals? Is it better for a man not to commit murder because the law states it and he fears the punishments? Or should a man be able to choose whether murder is wrong for himself? One way to look at it may be to say that a mor it is a moral man who makes the laws. But as Kant suggests, how can laws be judged by morality when they are what define morality? Kant's statement that morality cannot be judged by example goes exactly against the Confucius statement that people must be led by example. A common claim against utilitarianism is that it holds people too high of a standard. But what can be said of Confucianism in the same respect? It holds the ruler to the highest level of social responsibility. It states, in guiding a nation of a thousand chariots, approach your duties with trustworthy in what you say. Avoid excesses in expenditure and love your fellow man. Employ the work of the common people only in the correct seasons. Here Confucius speaks to the idea that the ruler must not abuse his position and holds a responsibility to the people. Why should we not hold our leaders to a higher standard than we hold others who are not in these positions of power? Commonly fi we find ourselves in the West saying of our leaders, well, what can you expect of them? They're only human. In a society where leaders are supposed to represent the interests of the people, this is ridiculousness. We elect people to positions of power, so why are they allowed to use these powers for their own personal agendas? For example, when the president uses the position to create trade deals or controlling interests in corporations and situations, they should be expelled from their position. A leader must be accountable for the actions at least as much as the common man for its responsibility to re represent the people. Furthermore, being in a position such as this makes them the forefront of the public's image. There should be someone to whom the public can look up to for moral gui guidance. Without moral leaders to lead them, a nation cannot hope to become moral. Why should a common man sacrifice for the greater good if those of higher position will not sacrifice smaller amounts to it? For instance, those with a net worth of, say, $1 million may only pay 8% of, of the taxes to support the nation while those with a net worth of only $100,000 may be paying 20% to cover their nation. Would it not be ethical for all, the, all men to contribute the same percentage to support their country? But because of the way the country is set up and the people with a vested interest in keeping these things the way they are, being in power, these things are left the way they are. What reason is there to be ethical for those who stand to make a profit being unethical? Therefore, to set up true representation of what the people should be, to be ethical, right across the board, not leave loopholes for people to be unethical when it comes to the greatest economic value to themselves.